You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Hello, this is Matt from the Explorers Podcast. I want to invite you to join me on the voyages and journeys of the most famous explorers in the history of the world. These are the thrilling and captivating stories of Magellan, Shackleton, Lewis and Clark, and so many other famous and not so famous adventurers from throughout history. Go to explorerspodcast.com or just look us up on your podcast app. That's the Explorers Podcast. If you like this podcast, can we recommend another one? It's called Big Picture Science. You can hear it wherever you get your podcasts, and its name tells part of the story. The big picture questions and the most interesting research in science. Seth and I are the hosts. Seth is a scientist. I am Molly, and I'm a science journalist. And we talk to people smarter than us, and we have fun along the way. The show is called Big Picture Science, and as Seth said, you can hear it wherever you get your podcasts. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. Welcome to Triviality. Uh, this is Ken coming at you. It's episode seven of Blood Sports, and we have a great match in store today. Uh, we have some fierce fighters entering the ring in this kumite of death. So let's uh, get right to it. We have a lot of people to introduce. Our first contestant today in the uh, Australian and also New Zealand bracket region one is Mark Sheehan. Welcome back to the show. You're from Sydney. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, thanks. Go Swans. Thanks, mate. So yeah, Mark from Sydney, um, IT consultant. Um, just recently had twins, so uh, you probably heard me uh, chat about it a little bit on a recent episode or upcoming episode. Uh, a few years ago, I started a, a question a day trivia website to get a little bit better at trivia. I don't think it has worked, but if anyone wants a little bit more trivia in their life, check out Trivologist on Twitter or Facebook. And I'm uh, always keen to get ideas on what I can do better. And always a pleasure to have you on the show as always. Uh, thank you for joining us today. But uh, you have a fierce competitor in Ryan Boyd today. He's from Auckland, New Zealand. And welcome back to the show, Ryan. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, sure. So, yeah, I live uh, here in New Zealand with, uh, got a couple of little kids as well, and uh, a cat on my knee, keeping me warm um, while it's on a rainy day. Um, yeah, I just uh, like to get some trivia. Awesome. And you, you probably hear uh, Ryan's little child every now and again doing the cream of the crop drop on our on our shows. <laughs> Yes. Which if you want to if you want to refresh those now that they're a little older, you know we could always use more. That is so. That let is let so us know cute, and we'll, we'll put them on. Yeah. Well, when once the he, the younger one's still one at the moment, once he's a little older, I'll uh, get him to do some as well. All right. Sounds good. And our host, as always, is Ryan Myers. How you doing, Ryan? You ready to go? I am rested. I am back from the Bloodsport Trivia Caves with 12 questions uh, that I was threatened with my life to write. So. All right. Well, without further ado, we will say fight and it will commence. So fight. All right, folks. We're just going to do 12 questions across various categories. Nothing funny yet format wise as with previous Bloodsport. Question number one. Making up 18% of the world population... Which Chinese ethnic group is the world's largest? Right. Great. Um, I have to talk about this. Um, probably not a good po thing to point out that my wife is Chinese, and I have no idea about the uh, answer of this one. Um, no, uh, Mongol. I got, I got nothing. Yeah. Uh, my guess was Cantonese. Uh, the correct answer is Han, H-A-N, Han Chinese. Question two. Which model of minivan, sold since 1994, shares its name with one of the most influential pieces of literature ever written? I'm locked in. I am not. I'm trying to think of the, uh, the Toyota. Um, but I can't. Oh, I've just thought of it, and that is wrong. But I will go with uh, Tarago because I have nothing better. Uh, I said the Odyssey. It's the Honda Odyssey. Very well done. That's a point. Question number three. Which singer's album Calypso became the first LP to ever sell over one million copies? 
I will go with, um, I'm trying to think of the, uh, the Margaritaville guy. Sounds around that. Um, Jimmy Buffett. That's probably the wrong Buffett. But that's my guess. My terrible guess. And Ryan? It's not Warren Buffett. No, that's, uh, that's yeah. <laughs> um, I had an uh, equally random guess. I said Harry Belafonte. It is Harry Belafonte. Absolutely oh, correct. What a guess. Question number four. In Norse mythology, the death of Balder is generally seen as the catalyst that sends what great doom into action? Yeah, I'm locked in. Well, none of these are landing in my wheelhouse at all. Um, my my limited knowledge of Norse, I, I think there's the great doom. I keep going to say Ragnarok. I know I don't think that's correct, but I'd have simply nothing better. So I'll make a fool of myself and go with that because it is a guess. All right, a guess of Ragnarok and Ryan? I also guessed Ragnarok. And it's correct for a point. Well done. Question number five. Like how the color orange is named after the fruit, what distinctive color takes its name from a flower named for a German botanist, hence the difficult spelling? I'm sure this is going to be something that is quite obvious once you hear it, but I I am going to lock in with something that's probably quite terrible. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of colors that are difficult to spell, but... Um... Depends how good at spelling you are, right? Yeah. A lot of them might be difficult. For me, they are. I, I don't know. I'm purple. I went purple-esque with fuchsia. Named after Leonard Fuchs, it's fuchsia. Oh, good one. Question number six. Mary Bryan, Dame Maggie Smith, Rachel Hurd Wood, Gwyneth Paltrow, Devin France, and most recently, Ever Anderson... Have all played which literary character on film? Yeah, I think Dame Maggie Smith played one of the uh, the Bond characters, which is where I'm going to go now. Which letter it is? I am not particularly well with Bond, and it may be completely wrong anyway. But my guess will be M. Um, I said Emma Woodhouse. Uh, the correct answer: They have all played Wendy, Wendy Darling uh. from Peter Pan. Maggie Smith and Gwyneth Paltrow in the same movie, Hook. After six questions, uh, Ryan started by working the body. He got uh, three right, but then Mark started his counterpunching. He got two right, so it's currently two to three. All right, let's go to question seven. The E.V. Howitt building in Manhattan became, in 1857, the first building to have what revolutionary invention installed? Okay, so my initial thought was an elevator or a lift, but the revolutionary, I don't know if that's a clue to like a revolving door or something like that. So now I'm tossing up between those two. I'm going to think it's a clue and I'm going to say revolving door. And Mark? If it's a clue, I completely miss it. I was thinking it might be as far back as the first flushing toilet. Ryan, you talked yourself out of it. It's a lift, ah. a passenger lift. It was, the, it was the first thing that could maybe arguably be called a skyscraper. Um, question, number, question number eight. Name either of the two winners of Drag Race Down Under. Both of them are Kiwi Queens. I'm going to pull out right now. I have no idea. The um, probably the most famous Aussie drag queen would be Courtney Act. Now I, I know Courtney Act won um, a different uh, different TV show, but as far as guesses go, I have one, so I will guess Courtney Act. And nothing from Ryan. Uh, Courtney Act was on the sixth season of RuPaul's Drag Race, was a runner-up, and won a Celebrity Big Brother. Um, but unfortunately, both of these are Kiwi Queens. Um, the correct answers are Ketamine and Spanky Jackson. Such clever names. Ketamine. That is golden. Ketamine is great. Um, all right. Question number nine. Sometimes painted, sometimes woven, and sometimes made intricately with colored sand. What symbol in many Eastern religions like Buddhism and Hinduism is a form of spiritual guidance discipline and used for establishing sacred spaces 
I will have a guess at the yin yang. And Ryan? I also said the yin yang. Uh, it is called a mandala. M A N D A L A. Mandala. Question number 10. Often heard in regards to food, halal is the term in Arabic for things that are permissible, as per the Quran. What is the term for things that are forbidden? I am completely coming up blank on this one. Me too. Yeah, I'm going to tap out on this one. I'm I'm completely drawing a blank. Me too. All right, a double tap. It is haram. H-A-R-A-M. All right, question number 11. Winning in 1973, Patrick White is still to this day the only Australian to have won which specific award? Again, winning in 1973, Patrick White is still to this day the only Australian to have won which specific award? I'll lock in with a very random guess. Um, yeah, I my guess will be very random as well. I'm assuming it's probably a sporting award of some sort. Um, so I'm just going to pick a sporting award and say the highest. Um, no, I don't, that actually, is that a is that an individual award? I don't even know if that's an individual award or not. Um, um, the Cy Young Award. I went the opposite. I went to the Pulitzer Prize. Oh, you were more on the right track. Um, it's the Nobel Prize for Literature. All right, and question number 12. On Snapchat, one can post something to the public for 24 hours if they post it to what? Again, on Snapchat, one can post something to the public for 24 hours if they post it to what? I do not use Snapchat or really any social media. So um, uh, I'm going to say, so Instagram has stories, Facebook has reels. What does Snapchat have? Snapchat has um, a window. They have a window. I thought it was also a story, a Snapchat story. It is your stories. Yes, that's correct. Um, Ken, where does that leave us? Well, that leaves us in a dead heat. Uh, three points to three points. That second half was pretty tough for both competitors. It's a slugfest, so let's uh, get the decisive blow. Okay, so since we are still tied, we are going to do a simple closest to the pin tiebreaker. I will give you a question that has a value. Whoever is closest, higher or lower, will break that tie. Your question is... Since the release of their first album in 1978, how many studio albums has the Australian band Midnight Oil released? So both answers have been sent to me. Uh, we have a guess of 17 for Ryan and 8 for Mark. So we'll see who's closest, and that will be the finishing blow. Oh, this is very close because it lies almost exactly in the middle between those two. Since uh, 1978, they have released 13 albums. So from a margin of four to five, Ryan will take it. Well I'm sorry, Mark. Ryan. That, was, that wasn't fair. That was cruel. <laughs> well done. And with a, uh, with a flying elbow, Ryan has crushed Mark's skull. And uh, that's, that's going to be the story of him. So uh, we want to once again thank both competitors for being on today. Mark, it didn't work out in your favor today, but it's a pleasure having you as always. Any final words? No, I can barely speak through my crushed skull, but thank you very much, both Ryans. That was awesome. Um, yeah, very close indeed. So hope that you go on to smash it, you mate. I'm rooting for you from here on in. Cheers. Thanks, mate. And yeah. Ryan, we will be seeing you soon in another episode in the next round. And Ryan Myers, why don't you take a quick uh, stroll to the Turkish bathhouse, get uh, beat with the leaves and the branches or whatever, and we'll be right back after these messages. And we are back with more blood sport. Ryan, how are you feeling after that spa treatment? I thought they were going to hit me really nicely, uh, but it turns out they picked all their roughest switches, so I'm feeling a little battered and bruised well, in the trade. I, I paid them. I paid them off, to be honest. But uh, I, you hope, know you're, what? I hope you're fair. refreshed. That I hope it was fair. invigorating. It is. I'm full of rage and uh, disappointment, so 
what fuels a person more than that. Sure. Well, I'm invigorated too, because we have uh, more guests joining us in this Kumite. First up, not a robot supporter, Natalie Anderson from Central Coast. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, when I'm at work, I'm a clinical psychologist and my area of interest is relationships. So I spend my days sitting with couples and hopefully helping them improve their relationships. And then at home, I'm mum to two teenage girls. So family life with my husband and myself and the girls is always busy and always fun. Well, that's all very sweet. But today, I hope you're working on the relationship between fist and face. And uh, our of next course. competitor is an <laughs> Oakland Five supporter, Claire Bancroft from Brisbane. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, while you're uh, wrapping up your knuckles uh, in the tape, can you please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm a director and preschool teacher at a childcare center here. Been working at the same center for 27 years now. So, um, and yeah, in my spare time, I'm just a nerd play video games, go to trivia, do all that sort of stuff. Wonderful. Well, you two need to go head to head, so I'm going to toss it right over to Ryan. All right, folks, um, we're just going to do a simple 12-question match. Whoever gets the most correct answers wins. Easy as that. We'll start with question number one, and your topic is going to be science. What is the term for a chain made of anywhere from 2 to 50 amino acids? They're linked by bonds that share the same name. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm struggling similarly. I've, I've got an idea, though. I'll lock in, but I'll throw it out there. Not confident, but... Look, the yeah, the best I could come up with is DNA. That's, that's all I can come up with. Oh, yeah, no idea. Uh, I, I often hear these words said together. So, again, no real idea, but protein was what came up for me. The correct answer here is peptide. That's a science thing. That's not my category. We'll move into question number two. Emerging in post-war Britain, which style of architecture is known for its harsh angles, bare concrete facades, and drab color palette? Um, I've got a guess that I'll lock in. It's all you can do sometimes. <laughs> you can go ahead and think out loud if you like. Me? Yeah. I can think out loud. Okay, so the only thing that's coming to mind for me is Art Deco, and I feel like that's colourful, so I'm not loving that as an answer, but nothing else is coming up, so I'll go with Art Deco. All right, Art Deco, and uh, what do we have in response to that? And I have no idea if this is a thing, but the word constructivism came to mind, so, yeah, not sure if it's a thing or not, but... That is a thing, but the correct answer here is brutalism. Okay. It's the worst architectural design, and I can tell you that because the only people that really like it are white dudes in their 30s. Well, the name says it all really, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I thought when you said brutalism, you were talking about the questions you're throwing. <laughs> so far. Hey. You're talking... <laughs> you're right, though. Um, brutalism is just when they were like, hey, how about we make it cheap so that we don't have to spend money, and that's the worst. Um, hey, let's go to question three. Which city is the second holiest city in Islam, as it was the location of the death of the Prophet Muhammad in 632 CE? Oh, look, you know, I've only got one idea coming to mind. Yeah, and I've only got one, and I don't even think it's the name of the city, but Mecca, like, yeah. All right, and our other guess? Yeah, Mecca was mine as well, but I'm pretty sure that's probably the first. It is the holiest city, but it's not the second holiest. This one's Medina. Is it funky and cold? It ain't it always? <laughs> As it should be. Um, let's go to question number four. Let's talk food and drink. Amaranth, quinoa, chia, and buckwheat are often given what two-word label indicating that they've largely remained the same as they did thousands of years ago when they were first being cultivated. This is largely an advertising term to appeal to health conscious eaters. I'll just lock in again. I don't think it's right, but it's better than having to talk out loud, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, thanks for that. Um, 
Okay, so I'll think out loud. So superfood came to mind, but then when you said about the original thing, I thought I threw that out. Um, I don't think that's it. And I, I feel like there's something dancing around in my head, but it's not coming. Um, I'm going to go with raw staple, which I'm very confident is incorrect. It's actually one of my favorite metal bands from the 80s. Oh. <laughs> and what's our other guess? Yeah, I was thinking superfood as well, but again, it didn't go back to the natural and the only thing I could come up with is whole grain. So you were halfway there. These are what are called ancient grains. Ancient grains. That question was inspired by me hearing that phrase and going, what exactly are they trying to say? Uh, Question number five. The main antagonist in many of the classic Robin Hood stories is a man with what job where? I can lock this one in. I was about to do the same. <laughs> if you want to just go on uh, go on three together, you can say it on one, two, three. Sheriff of Sheriff Nottingham. Nottingham. Absolutely correct. Well done. Yay, got one. <laughs> my my goal for the episode is complete. I just <laughs> yes, what I'm doing. Totally 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 <laughs> It's like, it's, I mean, we don't need to put some recording, but like these preliminary ones are a lot tougher. And then when we get to the main round, I, it's not going to be as brutal. There will be tough questions, but it's not going to be like constant, like level three, four stuff. So <laughs> question number six, U.S. Army Air Corps Colonel John A. McCready worked with Bosch and Lom to design them around 1929. Nowadays, they're sold under the product code rb Three one zero two five. What specifically are these? I can lock in. Okay, so the only thing that's familiar to me there is the word Bosch, and so I'm thinking I'm not even quite sure um, what Bosch does. I'm looking for some kind of clue from the RB. Nothing is coming to mind. All right, the only thing that came to mind was dishwasher. I'm very confident that's wrong, but. I will say it. All right. Um, can you tell your um, opponent what the RB likely stands for? Me? Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure if my years of working at Sunglass Hut is right, that these are Ray-Ban aviators. By the Army Air Corps, those are aviator sunglasses. Nice. Well done. After six questions, lots of punches being thrown. Looks like Claire <laughs> uh, finally threw up that Philly shell and has uh, two questions right to Natalie's one. I also worked in an uh, eyewear store for a while. And so, yeah, that product code is burned into my mind. Yes. And, you know, they were just usually Tom Cruise uh, Top Gun sunglasses <laughs> or the Tom Cruise Whiskey Business sunglasses, which were the Wayfarers. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, hey, let's go to number seven. We're going to talk about music. Unfortunately, it is not OzCon because I run out of Tina Arena questions. <laughs> <laughs> Question number seven. Which Swedish woman recently became the second person after Johnny Logan to have won the Eurovision Song Contest a second time? Oh, um, oh no, I watched it. I can see like her face. <laughs> and my friend watches it religiously, and I can't remember her name either. Can I describe her performance and her <laughs> outfit in detail? Because that we can do. <laughs> we all know Cha 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 was robbed. <laughs> Uh, Although I really did like uh, Australia's performance. Voyager. That was very fun. Voyager were great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got nothing. I can't, yeah, I can't even hazard a guess. My friend will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, Sarah or Sarah's coming to mind, but that, if that is even right, would be probably not a last name, but I'll throw that out there. Sarah. Well, she won in 2012 for Euphoria in this last year for Tattoo. Her name's Loreen. Yeah, L-O-R-E-N. Never, that was never coming back to me. Um, question number eight. What two-word phrase for carried off mysteriously or secretly provides the title of the second ever film to win the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature? I'll lock in the guess. Already? Feel free to talk aloud if you like. Oh, uh, I'm just I'm blanking completely. The best I can come up with is swept away, which is nothing like what it is. Um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna tap. I've got nothing. All right. And uh, your opponent, what would you uh, what would you fathom as a guess? Uh, I came up with spirited away. 
That's correct. Uh, oh, you said soaked away and I sobbed. Uh, yeah. We right <laughs> soaked away is that really bad Madonna remake. Yes, yes. <laughs> the OG one is also very bad. Um, but Spirited Away was correct. It won in 2002. The first ever winner was Shrek. They, they, they like created the category so that Pixar could win and did be because they they were like hey let us get oscars and then they didn't win for the first two years it's kind of funny um question number nine who is without a doubt the most revered and famous australian to have been born with congenital strabismus help if i knew what strabismus was <laughs> congenital strabismus this one is not tina arena i'm sorry no <laughs> I wish you'd stop saying her name because I'm really resisting the urge to make her I Need Your Body joke, which is, is there any way it was another words, one of her big songs. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of revered Australians. Isn't that bad? Like, yeah. But people overseas know. Yes, exactly. Oh. I'm only thinking of like movie stars and... You do not, do not try to metagame me on that. <laughs> ah. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Most Americans would not get this at all. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Well, there goes what one my guess was going to be then. Um, yeah, that's the point. Um, and I'll say the congenital strabismus is something you can absolutely see. For, uh, I'm going to lock in, but I don't, yeah, I don't think it's right. Sure. So I've done a journey through the... Um, acting world the music world i've landed in the sports world i have no idea if this is right but any chance i can get to shout this guy out i'll do it so i'm going to go for one of our most amazing tennis players dylan alcott love very that cool very cool um i wish i'd come up with that no look i just i couldn't think of anybody really that i would class as revered for somebody overseas but I just went with Dame Nelly Melba. I love that. Congenital strabismus means your eyes do not point in the same direction. I thought it was something to do with that. <sighs> so I'm looking for your World War II era leader, John Curtin. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. He usually cops every list of uh, greatest Australian uh, leaders. There you go. Question number 10. The 10 most circulated newspapers in the world are written in four different languages. Um, two of which are technically Chinese, but it's two different forms of Chinese. Please name two of the other three languages. All right, I'm locked in. Oh, sorry, Natalie. <laughs> I was just about to. <laughs> I'm actually just going to go with, I've sort of thrown a few ideas around. I'm going to go with the first two that came to mind, which were English and Spanish. All right. Which is exactly what I wanted to say. <laughs> Uh, the correct languages are English, Japanese, and Hindi. Oh. Sheer number of people gets Hindi up there, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Question number 11. What is the Sanskrit term for a pose or body posture in traditional yoga practices? Uh, lock in. Oh, I... I've got something floating around in my mind, but it's not, it's not, um, not coming to me. The only, the only thing I can think of is Lotus, but I know that's just a position. So yeah. Already locked in with Lotus. Okay. Um, and I think it might be Asana. It's one of those words you see in crosswords all the time because the letters are so useful. It is Asano. Yeah, it, there, there was something like that floating in my head that I just couldn't couldn't come out with it. Uh, Ken, where are we sitting going into question 12? Uh, looks like Natalie has three correct and Claire has two. So she's, she needs to uh, <laughs> counterpunch here. Question number 12. The cute, smiling mascot of which popular website is named Snoo, S-N-O-O. -O. Okay, I'll lock in with a... Yeah. I don't have a guess. I don't think it's a mascot as such, but it's the only thing I can think of. I don't even know if it's smiling, um, but Discord. 
great discord. And our other guests. And, and I was the same. This feels more like an app than a web than a website. But I was going to go with Snapchat. I think they've got a ghost, and I thought Snap the SN and Boo for a go. Oh, that's like, new. That's, <laughs> that's where I'm coming from. So good, I don't know that's, right. that's so good that I wish it were the actual answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Reddit. Ah, like- oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. All right, Ken. Where are we at? And that will end the competition. Uh, Looks like Natalie has triumphed with three correct answers over Claire's two. Uh, These questions are hard, so those are great great scores to be had in these uh, first preliminary rounds. Um, and uh, looks like Natalie has lifted up Claire and and broken her back Bane style, (laughs) unfortunately. (laughs) But... uh, Get you know, get recovering, and uh, maybe we'll see uh, in a future blood sport. Uh, Claire, <laughs> uh, any any final statements today? Oh, just congrats to Nat. Um, yeah, as as she said, I was happy to just get one or two answers right. So, um, thanks you guys for having me on, and um, yeah, love your show and keep up the great work. And uh, thank you, and, and thanks Nat- Ryan. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, Natalie, we'll be seeing you next time in the next round. Uh, Ryan, thank you for those great questions. Time to grab a a shower and cool off there. Now, if it's anything like the switches, it's going to be ice cold. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, before we go, as usual, we want to thank Airwave Media, uh, our network. You can find them at airwavemedia.com with other great shows such as All Creatures, Monster Talk, and Southern Gothic. And uh, with that, that'll end this round of uh, Bloodsport. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.